Here's my pick of the games from round two of the Chess Olympiad, and it's another crush. I'm going to show you a game from the Russia Ireland match. In fact, Russia didn't have it all their own way. Ireland managed to nick two draws, they played it very well indeed, but Russia won the match 3 1, and that meant they got their two match points. Remember, it's match points that count. So anyway, without further ado, the game I'm going to show you is between Nikita Vitugov from Russia against Connor O'Donnell from Ireland. And I really like this game because it was so straightforward. It's very impressive. So E4 from Vitugov. And it's a Karakhan. And the Russian decides to keep tension in the position. He plays pawn to e5. Of course, this is a very, very popular line these days, the advanced variation. Bishop f5 is the main theoretical move here. But perhaps the Irishman was fearful of uh, his opponent's theoretical knowledge. So he played pawn to c5, which is an interesting sideline. Pawn takes pawn. So this leads into a kind of French, where in some senses you could say black is um, a tempo down, but as compensation, white has given up his strong point on d4. Bishop d3, so it's bishop pointing in the right direction. Now here, I think black makes an inaccuracy that white pounces on. I think he should play knight c6 before capturing, recapturing the pawn attacking the pawn on e5 and after knight f3 only then recapture on c5. Let me compare and contrast with what happens in the game. Black recaptured immediately. What's the difference? Well this diagonal is still open for the queen and white played queen g4. So the queen takes up this really aggressive stance on the king side and it's actually rather awkward for black. g6 creates so many weaknesses around the king, so not good. So knight e7 played. Now this is interesting. If queen takes g7, then black gets counterplay with rook takes g2. But white found a really interesting idea. You could just go knight f3 here, but b4. So suddenly we've shot to the other side of the board. But it's it's a good idea because this really restricts black's pieces. And black finds it much more difficult to gain counterplay with, with this b pawn here. Might advance to, to b5. At the moment it can simply controls these squares. Also sometimes prepares to bring the bishop here to support the e pawn. Now, black plays a5, of course, white has to push on. I can understand why black wants to do this, um, because it gives the knight a nice route to the c5 square. On the other hand, that pawn takes away these squares from the knight, not, not just the, the queen side, the king side, but also restricts the movement of the queen's bishop as well. So I don't know whether black really should have done that. It might have been better to, to play the knight out to c6, but it's a moot point. It's, it's already quite difficult. Knight g6 played, blocking the queen out. And now h4. So white is just continuing full steam ahead on the king's side, threatening to push on. And if if the pawn, black pawn comes to h5, then the queen just comes back. And there are problems here. Now perhaps knight d7 is best, putting a bit of pressure here and preparing to bring the knight out. But black played f5. Queen comes back, so this supports the e pawn. And now white again is just ready to steam ahead. Castles kingside h5. So white can just carry on regardless here. Bishop h6 already mate threatened. Queen e7 
prevents mate. And, well, white played bishop g5 here, which works out very well. It might be even better to play knight c3, sometimes with the idea of knight a4, sometimes looking just to spin round with that knight to the king side. But bishop g5 played. Attacking the queen, the queen gives a check, that's fine. And knight d2. And here black panics a bit and plays, well, quite a tempting move actually, queen g4. But it might have been better just to bring the knight out to come to c5. But queen g4 played, which at first glance looks pretty good because if the queens are exchanged, then that is problematic for white with threat here. Queen h2 played. Okay, looks slightly odd to put the queen back here. In fact, Vitugov had calculated really precisely that it's possible to play like this. Obviously, it's a risk to put your queen back at the side of the board and, and leave your opponent's queen in active position. But watch what happens. Knight d7. And now comes the move which I suspect I could overlook. Bishop f4. Very clever. Just boxing in black's queen. Now this seems very, very slow because black already has counterplay here. But as I said, Vitugov has calculated very precisely. The bishop comes back. Now we can see there's a threat here. Threat just to bring the knight back to g1. And the black queen is trapped. Knight e4 threatens the pawn here. So, in fact, uh, white doesn't have time to, um, to, to hunt the queen down. But instead, rook f1. I mean, this is incredible. It, it's really slow. Um, but it's very, very strong. So simply threat, uh, defending the pawn. So the threat is knight g1, trapping the queen. Knight c3. Now, black has to take on e2, of course. And again, there's a threat to trap the queen with f3. So the only way out for the queen is to play g6. White takes. Now, if knight takes, that's the move we'd really like to play to bring that knight back into the action. Then rook h1 guards the h4 square, and then there's no defense, no decent defense. That was threatened, of course. And f3 traps the queen. Of course, you, you can give it up, um, and, but I mean, white, white is a piece up, of course. So in this position, after white takes, then queen g6 is forced. And you might think, you know, a quick glance at the position, uh, you might think, well, black is back in the game if black has time to play bishop d7 and rook c8. Then what's white's king doing here? Maybe this knight can come back into the game. But Vitugov has worked it out exactly. He realizes that he is just in time to launch a decisive attack on Black's king. And here's the point of a4. The rook swings across. Rook g3 threatened. So the queen came back. Rook h1. Now there's going to be a pile up here, so the threat is to play rook to h3 and to take the pawn. So the rook has to do a little shuffle to defend. It's really beautiful. And now knight f3. Next piece comes into the attack, threatening knight g5, and there is no decent defense. Knight g5 comes. And here, black resigned, understandably, as h7 is caving in. So, for example, if 
Uh, well, how are we going to do it? Queen g6, for example, knight takes h7, then the knight will spin back and something very nasty will happen. On the h-file with all those beautiful, beautiful major pieces, um, not, not to mention, yeah, there's also rook g3. Well, you can choose the way that you uh, dispose of black in this position. Uh, I just love that game. I know it's very simple. You know, it was fairly quick, but there were just a few surprising moments where white just showed that he had everything worked out and had everything under control. So really going back to this position here, actually, perhaps even earlier on move 15, he'd calculated out, certainly from this point, actually very, very deeply that with all those complications with the knight coming in, the black's queen was still trapped. Good stuff from Vitugov. Now, as I said, Russia won their match. And in fact, all seemed to me, I mean, that all the, the big teams came through as well. They might not have whitewashed their opponents 4-0, but um, their matches were won. So the USA had a bit of a fright. They only won their match two and a half, one and a half, but that's good enough to get them the two points. Um, in fact, there are only seven teams that have a complete whitewash of 4-0 in both their matches, uh, including France, Poland, and the Netherlands. But as I said, 41 teams are still on maximum match points. So very early days in Georgia. Hope you enjoyed that. Do check out the Olympiad playlist. And uh, well, let me know if there's uh, a team you'd like me to feature then do write in and let me know. I can't satisfy everyone, but I'll do my best to look around. There are so many interesting games played in the Olympiad. Thanks for watching.